Yeah, what are you saying? Are we good? Are we good? I'm peeking. What? I'm too loud? Too quiet? Tell me what? No good? Yes, good? What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Alex Vass, and I am here live and direct at Sneakerness, Europe's biggest footwear event. Now, we were sitting here the other day and we were discussing what makes a good footwear event. So, we've decided that we're going to hit every single one in the UK this year and let you be the judge. So, let's go inside and have a look. So now that we're in, we're going to have a look around at some of the stalls and some of the sellers, see who's got the best shoes, the worst shoes, more importantly, who's got the best deals. So let's go and have a look. What we got? We got some, some masters, some off-white again. See, Lawrence has taken it a step up. Look, he's got his own branded stuff now as well. Crepe Select glasses. All sorts of air freshness and stuff. Here we go, look, here we go, here we go. Wait. Crep Select in the building, Sneakerness London. Right. Right, Lawrence, Lawrence, what's the most expensive item that you have here? Well, these are only 1100, size 10. Only 1100? So it's an absolute steal, is that what you're telling me, yeah? That's a no discounting, especially, now can I say it? <laughs> what is the least expensive item on your stand? And that is not, not. Two bills. It's light. It's light. You can't drip if your kid's not dripping. What's it? What's your conscience saying about reselling kids' craners? Nice, it's a lot. Cause I have to buy them. I got kids, so I'm involved. What is um? What what's sneaking the same for you? Like how how are you finding the experience? Better than last year, bro. Last year was done out here. This year's popping. It's all right. It's good. But don't forget, last year you had a few issues. Obviously, there was like the World Cup. There was the weather. There was wireless. Wimbledon. This year's a lot, it's much better. Big up sneakiness. Okay, okay. So, if I'm buying something for you, what's my discount? No, I'll give you a bag, innit? I, I know these sellers don't have bags, I have bags. Well, you know what? I just went to another stand and they gave me a free t shirt. They gave me a free t shirt at another stand, so what are you saying? He didn't have a bag, though, did he? He didn't. Oh, no, they, they do have bags. They do have bags. But I'll take a crypto neck bag. Come on. I'll, I'll pattern that, I'll pattern that. Okay. We've got some more over here. This is Proxied. So Proxied is basically not even a sell ice. It's a bit of a weird situation. But if you haven't checked them out already, make sure you do. Let's have a look and see what they got. Some of the Supreme 98s. My man, tell me what you got. Who wants to talk to me? Tell me what you got. Tell me what Proxied is. A lot of people don't know what Proxied is. Proxied is a marketplace for sourcing a proxy. So like, technically like a pre-order. So every time Supreme or a Yeezy is releasing, there's the people that have secured the pairs. So they go on the app, they select the product that they've, they're proxying for, and then that's where the buyers can go on and source source it like at the release date, basically. So you're basically doing, you've made a business out of what people have been doing in Facebook groups for a long time, kind of thing. We've just transported the Facebook group, because we, we've got a couple of Facebook groups. We just transported them into an app. Amazing. So it's a, it's a seamless experience for the buyer. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a partnership with PayPal. So if you just want to buy it, it just all goes through on the app, doesn't leave the app. And then we've got the store in Soho. So if the seller, when they were listing their services, they have to select whether they can ship it and whether they can drop it off. If they said they can drop it off, and then if the buyer wants to collect it, it'll be like item is available for you to collect in Soho. Right, so we're walking around, celebrity spotting, and we found a pretty big one. Introduce yourself. So I'm Fresco, Fresco BK from Stadium Goods. I don't know if you guys recognize my face, but I'm not famous. This is the unboxing guy from Stadium Goods. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Tell me, what makes a good unboxing? Uh, details and uh, being able to explain it to different consumers, not just the common sneakerhead, but maybe the person that also just wants to buy and doesn't know anything about. So simplifying the process. Yeah. How have you found being at an event in the UK? How does it differ from the US? Um, well, in a general sense, sneakers globally, uh, it's it's very similar. So the, the aesthetic, first of all, definitely speaks to New York. But uh, 
the interior in regards to just like the selection and the the details in regards to product. It's it's not that much different from what you would find in a regular trade show. Well, from what I've seen on the state side. Yeah. So I went to ComplexCon last year in LA. That was incredible. Obviously a, a completely different scale to this. If it's a different deal. It's a different deal at ComplexCon than your regular, uh, like a more regular trade show. So um, obviously SneakerCon comes to the UK uh, to always towards the end of the year. So it's another one that we've, we'll be covering. I've been to SneakerCon before again. Uh, it's, it's very American. It's very big, bold, in your face. There's a lot going on. Is it the same sort of thing back in the US? Yeah, same sort of thing with, uh, definitely with SneakerCon. And shouts out to SneakerCon. I actually hosted SneakerCon conversations in New York and I want to say that was 2017 going into 18. So those are my guys. But even outside of that, what they've built with uh, SneakerCon, I have a high level of respect for. But with the change of the market and the seller being, you know, people are more so looking to sell than to buy. So it's a, it's a little toss up, but they, they do well. Like SneakerCon does well, but sneaker can't say. But uh, the, the other trade shows, Yes, I feel like they take bits and pieces of what SneakerCon does and then adds their own flavor into it because they've been around for so long. Yeah. Fresco, thank you very much. Do you want to tell them your socials quickly so you can gain some followers here? Probably not many, but you know, you got, you're getting more. Ladies, I have all my teeth, but anyway. So, Fresco BK, that's F-R-E-S-C-O-B-K. Easy, BK is for Brooklyn, not Burger King. Feel free to follow me. So next, we've come, I feel like a seller now, like I'm, I'm behind, like I'm trying to sell stuff. But anyway, I'm here with United Era. This is the name of the stool. Talk to me about it. Tell me about yourself. What's going on? What's on your table? Well, United Era, we started off uh, with two friends and uh, we were lost, uh, we lost each other uh, a couple of years ago. And then uh, we came together, so we felt uh, reunited and we called this the United Era. And that's how this thing started. Uh, after that, we, uh, pro we uh, made some progression and uh, now we're selling Yeezys. Exclusive Jordans, exclusive collaborations like Nike's, Xakai, and uh, all other stuff. And uh, yeah, man, that's it. What's the most expensive item you have on your stool at the moment? At the moment, on this table, I believe it's uh, not for resale. Uh, but be careful, no photos. <laughs> no, no, this is, uh, this is one of my favorite. Uh, and, uh, and then you've got a top tree gold, uh, which is uh, around 500 pounds. So how much is it for the no photos? Also around 500 pounds. Oh. And another favorite of mine is the Swarovski. Uh, this is covered in uh, Swarovski crystals. And uh, yeah, you, you can see it shining from a uh, distance. Talk to me about what is the cheapest item on your table right now. Anybody that's looking for a bit of a bargain. Is there any bargains here? Or are there steals? You tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're from the Netherlands and um, we like to call it puin, uh, which means like uh, <laughs> garbage. But that's not how we sell it, of course. No, this is, this is shoes that uh, have been here for a, uh, for a while. Uh, it's the Ultra Boost uh, undefeated collaboration. We sell it for 200 pounds. Uh, then we got here the Human Race, uh, Pharrell Williams, of course, which is around 250 pounds. But if you're looking for a little bit more exclusive uh, uh, type of shoes for a cheap price, then I suggest uh, the Yeezy Sesame. The Yeezy Sesame is uh, 280 pounds at the moment, and uh, yeah, you're still looking good, and you're still uh, wearing something exclusive that everybody likes. Your favorite shoe? My favorite shoe. Well, I'm, I'm a Nike, uh, Nike type of guy, and uh, I prefer uh, the Jordans. And uh, this one, uh, I have it as well. This is one of my favorite. Jordan One is always you can't go wrong with the Jordan One. And then we got another favorite of mine. Uh, this is also in my personal collection. And this is the Nike Air More Money, and the name says it all. Air More Money, uh, covered in gold uh, dollar signs. Air Money on top of it. So when you look down, walk in. Everything you see is money, and that's all to think about. And that's, uh, Amazing, thank you very much, bro. Jonah, let's give them your socials, make sure everybody follows you. Check yeah, man, my social media is uh, united.era. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook at United Era. Uh, we want to unite everybody in this uh, beautiful era. Uh, and a uh, big shout out to uh, the sole supplier. Thank you for this interview.
Right, cool man, Morgan's on his own. You might as well catch more Pram. Empty seat here, ready for me. It's almost like you was expecting me, Morgan. What are you doing, look? He's already posting content, look. Always content, content. What's going on? I'm good. Talk to me about Sneaker Freaker, man. This is a very different, different thing for you. You're, you're more used to like being the organizer as opposed to a seller. So I'm here today. Uh, we're doing Sneaker Freaker. We're doing the ultimate sneaker book, which is the biggest book you can get on sneakers. It's honestly like, you could do weights on this thing, man. You know what I mean? Have, have a feel of that. Um, we're dropping the new uh, magazine as well, uh, issue 41. Uh, like loads of pages. The, the, the magazine's been running for almost 20 years now. So it really is like the OG when it comes to this stuff. But we've got a mixture of, like, you know, everybody wants to see Supreme, Yeezy, all that sort of stuff. It's in there. Uh, but also, I want to show you these. New Asics collaboration. Is, it, is this an exclusive for us? This is the first time it's been seen like out of images. So this is the first like video time it's been seen man, at this event. So wait, wait, is this a Sneaker Freaker ASICS collection? Uh, it's a Sneaker Freaker. Uh, it's based on like an Australian snake called the Tiger Snake. Um, premium leather, really nice leather. And then you've got these like, like pink pops as well going on, 3M as well. So I think uh, it's kind of based a little bit on the linens, you know, the Air Force Ones. I think uh, some people have sort of noticed that. Uh, but like when they're on foot, they, the leather goes really nice and soft and like creases nicely. So yeah, looking forward to getting a pair of these. Sample size, so not for me yet in it, do you know what I mean? But we'll wait and see. I suppose the nice thing about Sneaker Freaker is that like print is not very common anymore. Yeah. It's very difficult to, like, to, to maintain and, and the fact that it's gone for 20 years and it's still about now. Print, print is difficult, man. Like I think we're one of the last left doing magazines. Um, so it's really like everyone that backs it and buys a copy and you guys support it as well. It keeps us in business, do you know what I mean? It keeps us going. And all we want to do is to showcase really interesting long form content, which is going to last around, do you know what I mean? So a lot of people end up using Sneaker Freaker in the books in their essays and they quote it and use it when they're doing like dissertations and stuff. Uh, so like we just want to be that sort of like fountain of knowledge, come to us, we'll, we'll geek out and nerd out. And that's what I'm happy doing, man. Right, so. It's very difficult for someone like you to come to one of these events and not buy something. Have you bought anything yet? No, no. Why? Um, is it because all you've seen so far is easy and off-white? No, I see like there is a lot of that um, and it doesn't really interest me too much at the moment. But I know a lot, I've, I've worked with these sellers, the sellers here, for like years now. So I've probably cleared them out of all the good stuff anyway. You work with them, yeah? Where, where did you work with them? Uh, other events in it, other businesses, bruv, other businesses, other times in my life, mate, other times in my life. But yeah, I know a lot of these sellers, they're all really good guys. Um, and anyone who fits in that 10, 10.5 category, I bought shit from, so yeah. What have you made of the event so far? You happy with it? Do you think it's been a success? I know, I know we're still on day one, but... We're on day one. I'm interested to see how the second day goes, because London never has two day events when it comes to sneakers. I like... Um, how smoothly it's run from a seller's perspective. Like the back end is just really nice, like setting up's easy and all that sort of stuff. The crowd's good, I've seen a lot of friends and the vibe's like, it's positive man, do you know what I mean? It's like everyone's really happy. Like I don't think people have put too much like emphasis on selling sneakers at this event, this one. I think it's just for a get together mate, like everyone's just enjoying themselves, innit? You know what, I've just spotted at the corner of my eye, the Puma Inhale that you've got on the table over there. Bring it over, let's have a look at it. What, what can you tell our viewers about the Puma Inhale? Because not a lot of people are going to know about this shoe. Well, basically, this is the cover that goes with it. I shot this, so this is one for me. There's not a lot of information out on this shoe. Like, it's, it's a very, like, it was a running shoe in the early 2000s. Um, I draw, when I saw it on the wall, I was like, yo, that looks like a 97. I was like, that looks like Puma's 97, or almost like a TN, because it's got like the plastic overlays. I tell you what, mate, it looks like an Astro to a football boot. That's what it looks like. As well, because if you look at the sole, do you see what I'm saying? But I've uh, I've tried these on, they're in eight, and they're really slimline, they look really nice. And I mean, this is what I want to see Puma doing more of. Like, everyone loves the RS and like, some of the newer models, but for me, I'm into retro running. And oh, even though I do like the suede, I think it's classic, right? You can't get away from that. I would prefer to wear something like this because I know I can like, do a quick dash if I need to, right? I love Puma, man. Puma been doing a really good job for the last 18 months. I love what they're doing. Nah, I'm saying goodbye now, though. I've had enough talking to you. But anyway, 
make sure you buy the Sneaker Freaker book. Um, even if you just want to do shoulders with it, I don't know, it's pretty heavy. But yeah, get one. But just don't think you can carry more than one at once because you can't. See you later. Right, so we've got something a little bit different. I know it's all about kicks when you come to these events and there's collectibles and stuff as well. I've got Dylan here from Designer Kits and he's going to talk me through some of the, as you can see, some of these sick kits that are behind us. Dylan, talk to me about it. Yeah, so basically we start with authentic Nike and Adidas jerseys and then from there we customise them and we can customise them to your kicks, to your brand, anything. Um, and literally the possibilities are endless. So again, we start with the jersey. We've got different designs here, so NASA, um, Dior, Off-White Style, New York, anything. Um, and literally, we can do anything. So we've got here, if you want to come around. Yeah, yeah, come show me, show me, show me. So we've got, let's say Dior here, yeah? So if you have a look at that, um, it's like a silicon, silicon badge. Um, that is literally like, that's our newest design right now. Hey listen, my Sunday league team and my midweek league team, if we have these, are you mad? See how sick these are? This is so live. Like if you actually feel the badge, it's like silicone. Like that is not coming off. So some of these are sick. So designerkits.co.uk. Dylan, thank you very much bro. It's been a pleasure. Anybody that's here, I'm sure you're going to be at a lot of the other events throughout the UK. That's it. So we'll, I'm sure we'll catch up with him again at some point. Right. So we've managed to catch up with Bradley. Bradley, you obviously work at Browns East. You've been involved with the Stadium Goose pop-up that we spoke to Fresh Road BK about earlier. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you thought of sneaking us today. You know what? Yeah, for my first time, I actually am impressed. Uh, I thought it was going to be So the conversations I've been able to have with people have been like super good. You know, I've learned some things as well, like the short time that I've been here for the day. But it's it's been nice. Uh, I wouldn't say buying stuff is where it's at here, but in terms of learning, especially with the panel talks, the one just going on now, like it's been super informative for sure. Yes, it's been a bit of a weird vibe really, isn't it? Because essentially there isn't a lot of buying and selling going on, which is what you kind of associate these events with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been very much like a social event for everyone to just rock up to and catch up with old people and, you know, kind of network. But in terms of, I haven't seen many people going around like buying loads of stuff. And there's there's not actually that many tables here today either, is there? True. I mean, what I was being told, someone told me that apparently they were struggling to get sellers. I don't know if that's true or not. Don't quote me on it. World exclusive. Yeah, yeah, you know, first here. Um, but no, I know like one of the guys down there runs full size on Max. He, you know, the start of the day, he said it's been really good. He sold like 12 pairs of kicks and he, you know, he sells quite high ticket items. Um, but he, even he said like towards the later of the day, like it, it has dried up. But I also think in terms of heat to buy, for those guys who are here, I think are like actual collectors. And those collectors are looking for serious heat that you can't find like me. Like, I've, I was hoping maybe I could find a pair of Powell's to add to the collection, but I've only found one pair. And not even my size. Unfortunately, I already have them. So it was like, it was a dead end there and then. Right, so that is a wrap for Sneakerless in London. We've spoken to some of the sellers, we've spoken to some of the influencers, but we want to know from you. Was you here? Did you cop anything? What did you think of the event in general? Let us know in the comments below. I've been Alex Vass, and I'll see you next time.